right? <clears throat> For example, if you need to extract a record of customer, when it comes to customer table, it will have millions of records, okay? Now, I need to extract the details of one of the customer, okay? Then what I will do, I will write a query. I will tell the system, hey, select details of customer, select star from customer, where employee ID is equal to this. So where customer ID is equal to this or where customer name is equal to this. I'll give the identity and based on that identity, it has to extract the details of customer. But when it comes to customer details table, it has millions of records. Whenever I say extract customer details where customer ID equals this, will it extract it directly? No. When it comes to your memory, your table, it has millions of records. And whatever you are searching for, that is one of them. Right? So in order to identify that record, it has to search all those million records. Once it gets identified, then it will extract that piece of information to you. Are you getting me? So if a table is having 10 or 20 records, so the search process would be easier. It can you know like easily identify that. But day by day, the table size will be increased. When your Facebook has started, it was started with only one user. But day by day, it is getting increased. Now it has millions of users, right? So day by day, your table size will be increased. As table size increases, your search process would become much more complex, right? Because it will take a lot of time. Your search process would also get increased. So it will take a lot of time to identify a single record. But how do I make my search process faster? If the search process takes more time than expected, then it will slow down my application process. I have to wait for more time to identify a single customer records. So how do I speed up this process? Simple concept. Yet they have followed your textbook concept. For example, you have a textbook with 10,000 pages. You have a textbook with 10,000. Try to understand the concept. This, this is very, very important. You have a textbooks, textbook with 10,000 pages. Right now, I want to read a particular concept, particular topic in my textbook. What I will do? Will I start searching all the pages one by one? What should I do? Should I start searching all the pages one by one? No, sir. We'll look at the index. What you will do? First, you will go to the index page. Try to concentrate here. Index page. From there, what you will do, you will identify that particular topic and the respective index number. In your textbooks, each and page, each and every page is indexed using a serial number. The first page will be having number one, second page will be having number two, three, four. So each and every page, yet yeah, the page is nothing but your data. Each and every page is indexed properly using some numbers, mathematical numbers. Right. So what you will do? So whenever you want to read a particular topic, so you will directly go to the index page where we have defined the index of each and every page. So topic one, it is available on this particular page. Topic two, it is available on this particular page. Just think if I remove that index page, let us assume that that index page is not there. Now what you have to do? I removed the index page. Let us assume that a textbook without index page. Index page is not there. Now you have to read a particular topic. What do you have to do? Guys, respond quickly. We'll directly look at the pages to find out what we are looking for. It means what you have to do? To identify your topic, you have to search each and every page, right? Yes, sir. If the index page is not available, what do you have to do? You have to go to page one, check the title, go to page two. So in order to, until your concept is identified, you have to keep on searching each and every page. It means you have to spend a lot of time to identify a single topic. Here also same thing, right? In your table, each row is nothing but one data page in your textbook. It will have millions of rows like your textbook. Whenever you ask system to identify something, it should also do the same thing. It has to search row by row, row by row. If there are a million rows, 
think about it it will consume lot of time to make the search process faster what has to be done in case of your textbook you have to index each and every page right it means you have to assign some unique numbers to each and every page and that information should be kept on the master page in the front page so whenever you want to read particular topic now you don't have to search each and every page in your textbook rather you can directly go to that master page index page and there find out the index of that corresponding concept from there you can directly navigate to that particular page no need to search all the pages right so here also you should implement similar kind of concept there is no change your table is also like your textbook every row is like your page like your textbooks is having thousands of pages right 10000 pages here your table will have 10000s of rows millions of rows lakhs of rows crores of rows each row is nothing but one data page if you do not index your rows what happens system should also do the same thing to identify a single record it has to search all rows one by one to speed up the process what has to be done like your textbook your table rows should also be indexed properly your table rows should also be indexed properly like your textbook like the way how you allocate the page numbers to each and every page here also you should allocate some unique numbers to each and every row and create a index page and keep that information in that index page whenever you ask system to identify something what system will do it will directly go to that index page find out the address of that corresponding row from there it will directly go to that row so it doesn't need to search for every row so that way you will be able to increase performance of your search process any questions guys no sir no. okay you understood the concept right so here also you should do the similar kind of thing so when it comes to indexes so let me show you we have two types of indexes clustered index non clustered index clustered index non clustered index so your data rows data pages your data can be indexed in two ways clustered index non clustered index so what is the difference between these two okay we'll tell you that so in case of clustered index when you talk about clustered index a table can have only one clustered index but it can have maximum of 256 non clustered index in the older versions and 1024 in the newer versions of sql server database there is some limitation okay when it comes to a table a table can have only one clustered index but when it comes to non clustered index it can have more than one non clustered index but what is the difference between clustered and non clustered so when it comes to cluster your data will be stored in a b tree structure i'll show you how your data will be organized this is your master node first mass let's say our table is having 100 records 100 records 1 to 100 records let us assume that it has 1 to 100 records as i said when it comes to clustered index data will be indexed properly and data will be organized in b tree structure b tree structure means now it has 100 records all 100 records will not be stored in one node what it will do it will split this into two sub nodes two sub nodes two sub nodes two more sub nodes will be created so what happens the sum node will be divided equally among these two nodes it means from 1 to 50 will be stored on node 1 and 51 to 100 will be stored on node 2 are you with me this is your master node 
it will be equally split into two nodes, two child nodes. And the first 50% will be stored under this. Next 50 will be stored under this. Next. When it comes to this, based on the size, again, it will get divided into two more sub nodes. This is called beta structure. Two more sub nodes. Again, this 50 records. It has 50 records, right? This 50 will be split among these two sub nodes. So, 1 to 25 is going to be stored under node 1. Next, 26 to 50 is going to be stored under node 2. Next, when it comes to 51 to 100. So, again, this will get divided into two sub nodes. Fifty one to seventy five will be stored under this node and seventy six to hundred. Like this, based on the size, your master node will control all these sub nodes. It will define like how many sub nodes to be created. Here we have only hundred records, maybe this much structure is enough. But when it comes to real-time application, there will be millions of records. We will see a lot of sub-nodes. Okay, so let me. It will get divided into two sub-nodes. Again, it will get divided into two sub nodes two sub nodes are you following me guys okay let's say we yes, have 100 implies 100 employees. Okay. So this is called your index page. Who will maintain your index page? Master nodes will maintain their index page. Right. So now let us assume that your employee, your customer table is having 100 records. Okay. And the customer ID started from one. The last customer ID identity is 100. Now what it will do, this 100 will be divided equally among its sub nodes. Let's say it has created two sub nodes. Okay. So it will follow a standard algorithm. Based on that algorithm, it will decide how many sub nodes are to be created. So the amount will be equally divided among all sub nodes. Okay. Let us assume that it has created two sub nodes. So first 50 will be placed into sub node one, and second 50 will be placed into sub node two. If it feels like it is too much load, if it feels like if the master node feels like a, this node, it will always balance the sub nodes. It will check the weight of this node and weight of this node. If it thinks like a, it is having too much node, then what it will do? Again, it will get divided into two more sub nodes. Let's say the 50 will get divided into two parts again. So it creates two more sub nodes. The node one is going to have 1 to 25, and node two is going to have 26 to 50. Again, if it feels like a, again, it will check the balance. It will balance the size of the nodes. If it feels like hey, this is having too much burden, then this will get divided into two more sub nodes. Read me. So it would always keep a reasonable amount of load on each and every sub node. It will follow some standard algorithm. Based on that algorithm, it will decide how much load has to be kept in each and every sub node. If that exceeds maximum load, then that will get divided into two more sub nodes. Okay. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. No. Now, if I store all 100 nodes in one place, so what happens? Let's say whenever you want to search for some particular customer. So you are saying the system like a hey, select star from customer where, where customer ID is equal to 26. Let us assume that these nodes are not there. Now, only this mass node is having one to 100 records. Now, what it has to do? In order to identify our 26 record, it has to search one by one. 
it has such one, two, three, four, five, six, until the 26 identified, you should keep on searching it. But what it is doing, just rather, it has divided that entire data into smaller, smaller parts. Now it will maintain address of each and every node. It will maintain address of each and every node. It knows, like once it comes, once your control comes to this index page, master node, right? Here it doesn't contain any data. Master node doesn't contain any data. So all the subnodes will be controlled by your master node. So it will have index. It will provide the information, like where that node is available. Once control comes to your master node, it will tell the system, hey, you are looking for 26. Now go to left node. Where is 26? 26 is there under node 1. Right? 26 got stored under node 1. It will tell the system, hey, go to this. Now what we did? We have avoided almost the such of 50% the 50 records. All right to me. Let's say I'm searching for M customer ID is equal to 62. In order to identify 62, whatever is there before 62, you should search all those records. Right? But in this case, what system will tell? Once it comes, once your control comes to here, if you're looking for 62, yes, it will tell. Hey, if you are looking for 62, please go to right node. The 62 is available on right node. Now, what we did? We have avoided the searching of first 50 records. So we have saved the searching time. Now you can directly go to here. Here we have 51 to 100. But where is 62? Again, here it will maintain a sub-index page. Again, it will tell you, hey, don't go to this. You're looking for 62, right? Just directly go to this. Are you to me? So this way, you'll be able to speed up your search process and you'll be able to identify your record within the reasonable amount of time. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Now, where no. is my data actually stored? My data is actually stored under final node, last child. First 25 records are stored under this node. Next 25 are stored under this node. But what is there in the upper node? It will have only index page. What is there in the master node? It will have master index page. Right? It got divided into two sub nodes. But are we storing data in this sub node? No. Again, it got divided into two sub nodes. The data is being stored in the last child. But all other above, the upper parents will be maintaining only index of their childs. Okay. So for this, this is parent one, this is parent two. The index of this data will be there under parent one. And the index of this will be there under parent two. Are you to me? So their parents will be maintaining their child's data. Okay. So always the child index will be maintained by the corresponding parent. And this child will be maintained by corresponding parent. Okay. So this is called clustered index concepts. In case of clustered index, data will be stored in B3 structure and data will be stored physically in the data nodes. And where exactly the data will be stored? In the last child of that hierarchy. And all above, so whatever is positioned above that child would be maintaining only the index of the actual database. <clears throat> Any questions, guys? No, sir. No. So this is clustered index concept. <clears throat> Nine case of non-clustered. For example, when it comes to data, not only records, right? So you will be maintaining in case of records also, you'll be storing millions of records. If the data is too much complex, if you're storing large amount of data, right? So having the complete piece inside a node would also degrade performance of your application. In that case, what we will do, if it is really complex, what we will do? We do not store data directly on the nodes, rather, we will store data somewhere and keep the reference of data here. In case of non-clustered, data will not be stored physically under nodes. Data will be stored somewhere. The reference of, like your heap memory, the reference of those data pages will be maintained under nodes. There is a difference between clustered and non-clustered index. 
So when it comes to clustered index, there is a limitation because data will be physically stored under nodes, your data nodes. That's why you can have only one clustered index. And clustered index will be working very faster compared to your non-clustered index. Are you to me? So for example, when should I go for cluster? When should I go for non-cluster? So if your table is having any unique column, like employee ID, customer ID, because when it comes to your data pages, your data pages should be indexed using some unique numbers, unique numbers. So there, to index your data, you have to use any one of your table column either employee ID, employee name, or any column. If I use employee name, if I index my database using character, what happens? Again, the search will slow down. Or it, it would become, it would degrade performance of your application because, for example, if you index your textbook using characters like A, B, instead of one, two, three, if you use A, B, C, what happens? So such a process would become much more complex. It is very difficult to identify characters. We can easily identify numbers. Okay. So that's why to index your data, you should always use only numbers. So number-based column. And that should be unique. So mostly, when it comes to employer customer, right? What is going to be unique in the table? In employee, employee each employee will have a unique employee ID. Right? So employee ID column is going to have unique data. So we have to make use of only employee ID column to index your data pages. If I use employee name, what happens? Same name can be there for more than one employee. More than one employee can have same name, right? So employee name is not unique. That's why I cannot use employee name to index my data. So whenever you want to index your data using cluster index concept, you have to use only key-based columns, like unique columns. Any questions, guys? No, sir. For example, and why do I need an index? Index would make my search process faster. Right? Whenever I say select star from employee where employee ID is equal to 100, what happens? Now we have indexed these pages using employee ID. It knows where is employee ID 100 stored. It will directly redirect that control to that respective node. But every time we won't be using only employee ID, right? Sometimes we'll be searching data using employee name, father name, gender, and date of birth, right? You can search your data using any one of the column based on different, different requirements. If you use employee ID in your search, it will be working very faster because we have indexed all of our data pages using employee ID. But if I use employee name in my search, what happens in this case? This concept is going to not is not going to work. Are you to me? Because I have to search data using employee name. If you use employee ID in your search, if you are searching using employee ID, your data has been indexed using employee ID, so it will be working very faster. If I search my data using employee name, what happens? Here your data is not indexed using employee name. So again, you have to search all the records one by one that would become again a problem. So in this case, in, in, in case of non-unique data, how do I speed up my search process? In case of non-unique data, how do I speed up my search process? Employee name is not a unique data. So in that case, you can go with a concept called non-clustered index. Every table would maintain a unique key. That's why cluster index is limited. First, you have to index your data properly using that unique key. And based on your requirement, if you think like you're going to use other columns frequently in your search process, for example, when it comes to employee, we are searching most of the records using employee. So employee name is being used frequently in my search process. In that case, employee name is not a unique data, but still you can index your data using employee name. In that case, go with non-clustered index. When it comes to non-clustered index, you can index your data using more than one column. You can index your data using more than one column. And it need not be a unique data. You could also index your data using duplicate 
data. Data can be indexed based on duplicate columns also. So whenever, if you think like, you know, like if some columns, some set of columns are being searched frequently, then build a index on those columns. There, this concept is useful, non-clustered index. When should I go for non-clustered index? Whenever I need to build an index, whenever I need to index my data using character-based columns and non-unique data-based columns, then your approach should be towards non-clustered index. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, for example, in one of the cases, most of the employees are searching based on customer name or customer gender or some other column. In that case, you can create more than one non-clustered index. Create one non-clustered index based on employee. Create one class non-clustered index based on gender. So, based on your requirement. So, when should I build index if something is being searched frequently? So, whatever the column that is being used frequently in your search process, identify that column and consider that column to index your data in case of non-clustered index. Are you doing? Okay, let's say for example, if I index my data based on transaction amount, that doesn't make any sense. For same user, if you're performing multiple transactions, transaction amount gets deferred for transaction to transaction. Right? But gender will not be changed. Employee name will not be changed. Customer name will not be changed. Right? So whatever the data that is being changed frequently, we should not build index on that. Right? So whatever is going to be constant, for example, employee name is going to be constant. Gender is going to be constant. Your address is going to be constant for some time. Your city is going to be constant. Your state is going to be constant. So whatever is going to be constant over a period of time, so you have to build index using only those values. For example, in my table, I have a column called transaction amount. If I build index on a transaction amount, that doesn't make any sense. Same user can make n number of transactions. That username will not get changed. His ID will not get changed. His address will not get changed. But transaction amounts will get changed. Right to me. So whatever is getting changed frequently, do not consider that column for building index. Whatever is going to be constant, consider only those columns to build your indexes. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we know that like your textbook to speed up your search process, what has to be done? Your data pages your table table rows has to be indexed properly like your textbook so whenever you search for something your search process will make use of those indexes index pages to identify them okay so when it comes to index we have two types of indexes clustered index non clustered index when it comes to clustered index a table can have only one clustered index this is a very important question many interested ask this question what is the difference between Clustered index and non-clustered index. Do not get confused. What is the index? Index is very similar to your textbook's index. The concept is same. Okay. If the index page is removed from your textbook, so you have to search all the pages one by one. Same thing. If there is no index on your table, your system has to search each and every row. Right? If, row, if your rows are indexed properly, what it will do? It will go to index page. If you're searching for, if you're searching for some row 16. So it will go to index page, identify that particular row address, and from there, it will directly go to that particular page and pick up your record. Okay. A table without index is like a textbook without index page. A table with index is very similar to a textbook with index page. Process would remain same. Okay. So there you have to search manually here on behalf of you, system will take care of identifying that particular data page. Okay. So why do we need a non-clustered index? When it comes to clustered index, so we should always use unique data, whether it is number or character, only unique data has to be used to build your clustered index. It should be unique. 
When it comes to non-clustered index, we can build non-clustered index using duplicate data also. For example, employee name. Same employee name can be repeated. For example, if we take Dantu, more than one employee can have same name, right? So, but if your organization is making more searches using only customer name or employee name, what should I do? If this column is being used frequently in the search, what should I do? Obviously, I should again build some index on that particular thing to speed up the search process. But it's not a duplicate, it is not a unique data. How do you build the index? Then our approach should be towards non-clustered index. When it comes to non-clustered index, in the older versions of SQL Server, you can build maximum of 256 non-clustered index and two different 256 different columns. In the newer versions of SQL Server, it is extended up to 1024. So you can build your indexes on maximum of 1024 columns. That can be a number-based column or character-based column. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. What is the difference between clustered index and non-clustered index? So in case of clustered index, so whenever you want to index your data, clustered index is the right option. In case of clustered index, data will be stored in the beat sheet section. And here, data will be stored physically in the data nodes. Data will be stored in beat structure. And the balance of all nodes will be controlled by master node. If any one of the node is having too much load, then the master node will divide that into two sub nodes. So it should always, it will always take care of balancing the load on every child node. It would always keep only a reasonable amount of load on every child node. So when you talk about clustered index, you should make use of only unique based columns, like whatever the column that is going to be used to index your data should have unique data, unique data. So ideally we do consider number based columns for indexing your data. Okay, so once I am repeating, we have two types of indexes, clustered index and non-clustered index. In case of clustered index, a table can have only one clustered index. In case of clustered index, data will be stored in beta structure and data will be stored physically in the data nodes. And what is non-clustered index? In case of non-clustered index also, data will be stored in, so it will be stored, the data will be stored in the BT structure but the data will not be stored physically. The data will be stored somewhere. The reference of data will be stored under nodes. Non-cluster index would also follow the same BT structure, but nodes doesn't contain data physically. It contains only references like your heap memory, like your pointer in C. But the actual data will be there somewhere. Only reference of the data will be stored under this. Somewhere means where it will be there. So once this clustered index is created, your data will be indexed properly using numbers, some using some unique data. That will be there physically on the clustered nodes, clustered nodes. If you're building any other additional indexes, any other additional non-clustered indexes on any other columns, one more BT structure will be created. And this holds references of your clustered data clustered nodes. Are you me? So data will be stored physically on the cluster nodes. The references of that physical data will be stored under your non-cluster nodes. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so now how do I create a clustered index and non-cluster index? Let's create a table. When it comes to cluster index, by default, if your table is having any primary key, right? If your table is having any primary key constraint on any column, whenever the primary con key constraint is created on your table, by default, upon successful creation of your primary key, by default, one index will be created that is called your cluster index. For example, Yesterday, we have created a customer table. So customer database. In this, we have created a table called, where is that? What is your database name? Yesterday, we created customer only now. Yeah, customer. We created some tables like employee and department. 
Now, employee is having employee ID, primary key. Right? Here we took employee ID as primary key. Right? So, whenever the primary key is created, if you are keeping primary key constant on any column, upon successful completion, so successful creation of your primary key, by default, system would create an index that is your clustered index. If you keep a primary key, by default, the clustered index will be created by the system. You don't have to create it explicitly. If there is no primary key available on your table, then if you still you want to index your data, then you have to create cluster index explicitly. Are you to me? When should I create my cluster index? Whenever I need to index my data. If there is no primary key created on your table, then this has to be created explicitly by the developer. You would create it explicitly. But if there is any primary key associated with your table, what happens? Whenever the primary key is created on your table, during that, it would also create a clustered index. So you don't have to create it explicitly. Where can I see this? If you go to indexes, here you can see here. I have an index created by the system. Did we create this yesterday? No. It was created automatically by the system. Read me. So if the primary key is there in your table, so by default system will take care of indexing your data using clustered index and this particular column will be used. So whatever the data that is being stored in this particular column, that data will be used to index your data properly. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. And if you want to create it explicitly, you can. If the primary key is there, it will be created automatically. By default, it will be created by the system. You don't have to create it. You can't even create it if you want to create it explicitly because a table can have only one clustered index. This was already created during your primary key creation. Now, if I create, want to create one more clustered index, you will not be allowed. It doesn't allow you to create any clustered index. But I can create non-clustered indexes on these columns. Okay? If primary key is not there, then you can go ahead and create it. Okay? Let's create one table. Create table some test. ID int identity of 1 comma 1. E name where care of 100. Right? Now I'm creating a table. Test. Go and refresh it. Where are you creating? Under customer. Okay. Refresh it. Tables. Test. Expand it. It doesn't contain any primary key. Now go to indexes. So nothing got created. Nothing got created. Right? Now, I'm dropping this. Drop table. Test. If I create primary key and this primary key, execute it and refresh it. So this column is having primary key. So as I said, if any one of your table is having primary key, during the creation of primary key, system would take care of indexing your data using a clustered index. So by default, clustered index would also be created by the system. Now go to indexes. Here I can see primary key. This is the index. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. Let's drop this again. Drop table. Test. Now, I'm not creating any primary key during table creation. Right? Now my table has created. It has two columns. There is no primary key created on my table. So, 
no cluster index got created by the system. System did not create any cluster index. Now, if I want to create it explicitly, I know that this is going to hold the unique data. If there is no index created for my data, what happens? It will definitely slow down your search process, right? So that's why I would like to index my data using ID column, okay? So if you want to create a cluster index explicitly, you can create it. How do I create it? Create clustered index, clustered index. We have a command called create cluster index. If you want to index your data explicitly, then use this command, create clustered index, create non-clustered index. We have two commands, create clustered index, create non-clustered index. Okay, let's see how to create a clustered index. Create clustered index, index name, give the index name. Let's say, I'm just giving it as idx underscore text, any name, any name. Okay, on which, on the table name, test, in which column, ID. We're saying that, hey, create a clustered index with this name on, ID of this table. Now what it will do? It will go to this table and it will create a cluster index on ID. It means it will make use of this particular column to index your data, to arrange your data in data nodes. Okay, execute this. Now go back to your table and test it. Columns, it has no primary key but it has an index, right? Now, how do I create non-cluster index? Okay, for example, employee name, but employee name is not going to hold unique data because same name can be there for more than one employee. So definitely it will be having some duplicate data, but employee name, so most of the users are searching their data using their name. In this case, what should be done? I should also index my data using employee name. But as I said, a table can have only one clustered index. That is done. Now I cannot create another clustered index. Okay, only one clustered index is allowed per table. But I can create a non-clustered index, right? So how do I create it? Create non-clustered index. Some non-IDX. It means non-clustered index test on. So this can be created on more than one column. This can be created on more than one column. Test of, I can give ID again, ID comma, E name, or you can give E name. As I said, this can be created on more than one column. Okay, so what are the set of columns that are being used in your search process? Okay, so you can create a single non-cluster index on the combination of multiple columns also. Okay, now do this. Now I have two indexes created. Refresh it. See. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. And I could also create a separate index on name also. Here I used both ID and name. Why? Sometimes we'll be searching the data using multiple filters. For example, if you are buying something in your Walmart or Flipkart, there you will search it using your requirements. Let's say I wanted to buy a mobile. Then when I say mobile, if I put mobile in the search, what happens? It pulls all brands, Samsung, iPhone and all. No, I wanted to buy an iPhone or Samsung phone. Now what should I do? I would do Minimize my search process, right? So go and choose the filters. You have to refine your search. What I will do, I will select the brand. I will change the brand to Samsung. Next, price range. I wanted to buy a mobile within the price of $50 to $100. Then I, choose, I need to choose another filter, right? So in this case, you are going to search for a particular product using multiple filters. Are you to me? Now, what it will do? It will search for your item based on your search criteria. Now it has to it has to identify it has to identify a product based on two values, brand as well as the price. 
read me so in this case not only one column sometimes user can search using multiple columns in this case we are you have to search using the brand name as well as the price range read me so in this case if many users are going to use only these two columns frequently in their search what should i do i have to build an index on this combination this particular combination i feel like every time many of the users are using only these two filters frequently most of the users are searching for products using this brand and price range now what should i do to speed up my search process i have to build an index based on only these two columns so whatever the columns that are being referred frequently used frequently in your search process you have to choose that combination and build an index on that combination so that can be possible through non clustered index that's why here i used two columns not only two you can use multiple columns 3 4 5 6 any questions please right? No. no sir okay so this is something index about indexes okay if you understood the concept i think then you are good because when it comes to real time applications in most of the scenarios will be using indexes okay right next let's start extracting the data from your table in different ways using different operators now we have some data here select star from customer customer employee employee does it contain any data okay let's insert some more insert into employee values employee id is an identity no need to supply it some a a female department id 3 some bbb department id 2 some ccc mail department id 3 okay and let's do one thing select Stop from employee. I need good amount of data. Okay, here we have good amount of data. Okay, it has employee ID, employee name, and salary. Okay. Now, these are also not enough. Let's create our own table. One more table. create table customer customer id int identity of 1 comma 1 it is a primary key now what happens if i say primary key it doesn't allow national data it allows only unique values and by default on successful creation of your primary key by default one clustered index will be created it means it will make use of customer id to index your data next name customer name c name where care of and gender 
care of one. Okay, next. Country. Where care of 50. Okay. And membership fee. Membership type. Where care of 100. Amount paid money. Okay. Right. This table has created. Let's start inserting some values. Insert into customer. Values. Customer ID is an identity will be generated automatically. You just need to give name, some Prakash, gender, male, country, USA, membership type, silver, and amount. To read twelve hundred dollars. Execute it. Next, Dantu USA Gold two thousand. UK so platinum email India. Okay, so we have inserted some set of records. Let's start from, okay. Now you would extract your data based on different requirements. Okay, guys, can you follow, are you following me? Yes, sir. Okay, now I'll give some scenarios. Now you would write queries. Okay, the first one. Okay, so according to my requirement, I wanted to see <clears throat> how many people have taken the membership in the gold category from the country called Australia. I want to know. Okay, so in this case, you have to extract the data of the customers, those who are having gold membership, and they should be from Australia. Okay, in this case, how do you write? First, let's make use of two operators and or. It will be very similar to your C sharp. Here, what is our requirement? Customer should have gold membership. 
and its country should be Australia. You should be from Australia. Right? Here you have to verify two conditions. If the if both the conditions are satisfied, then only you have to extract the data. So how do I write it? Select star from customer. You'd use where class, where condition, where class, where put all your conditions, where's and what, like your if condition, where according to our requirement, you have to extract the details of customers, those who are from Australia and having gold membership. So if I want to verify the gold membership, where the data is being stored in membership column, membership type, where membership type is equal to gold and country should be Australia. Country is equal to Australia. Right? What it will do? It will go to customer table and search with these two. Whoever is having members type type is equal to gold. First, it will identify that list and within that list. And those who belong to Australia, it will pick up those records. Execute this. No one is there. No one is there. If I say India, it means no one from Australia is holding gold membership with us. From India also, no one. USC? Yes. We have two people from USA holding gold membership. Gold membership. Any questions, guys? No, sir. Okay. And I'd like to announce some gift to the customers. Those who are either holding gold membership with us or they should belong to country India. Okay. I would like to, I'd like to you know, choose some specific people to announce my gift. Either they should hold gold membership with us or they should be from India. In this case, either they should hold gold membership, membership type is equal to gold, or they should belong to country called India. If they are from India, I would like to give them the gift. They don't need to hold any gold membership. Are you doing? If they belong to other countries, I'd like to choose only a few specific persons. Those who are holding gold membership with me, I'd like to choose only those people. Okay, so I'd like to announce gift to my customer. Either they should be from India because I'm going to launch new outlets in India. That's why I'd like to choose few specific people from India. Either they should belong to India or if they are from other countries, they should have gold membership with us. In this case, we have to, to verify two conditions. Either they their membership type should be gold or they should be from India. Then only they are going to be eligible to choose that gift. Read me. In this case, you have to make use of R. Now, I found three people. These two are from USA. Why did we choose in these two? Because they are holding gold membership. But this guy is holding platinum. But when he, why he came into the picture? He is from India. Okay. In case of R, what it will do? In case of AND, the record will be extracted if and only if all conditions are satisfied. If I keep AND, what happens? Either this, con this condition and this condition, both conditions should be satisfied. Then only it will extract the record. So whatever the record, that is satisfying these two conditions will be extracted into the result set. If I keep or no need to satisfy both the conditions. If both the conditions are satisfied, then we are more than happy. Are you doing? But at least either this or this has to be satisfied. If any one of these two conditions is satisfied, then this record will be extracted. So it will extract all the records, those who are satisfying either this condition or this condition. There is something about your AND and R operators. Any questions? No, sir. Next. Like, not like.
like not like this is a kind of wild card search wild card search i'd like to announce some gift to my customers those whose name starts with s whose name starts with r or whose names end with s whose name ends with r or whose name contains s whose name contains r are you for example in google right if you are not aware of the complete term to be searched what you will do when you keep something like eb what are the things starts with eb will get populated over there that is called wild card search wild card search whenever you want to search for a particular thing using some part of that particular thing not the complete name subset of some string of that particular thing okay then you can make use of like and not like how do you use it for example i'd like to announce the gifts to all customers those whose name starts with s or whose name starts with d okay in this case you can use like and not like select search from customers where 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 customers or customer customer where what is my condition the name should start with s where name is being stored in c name in which column c name where c name like if i say starts with use like if i say not starts with use not like i'd like to announce the gifts those whose name doesn't start with s then use not like okay so here in our case they wanted to announce the gift to the customers whose name starts with s so use like like in single quotes you would use percentile symbol like s percent percent s there is a difference percent s and s percent it means starts with ends with see the let's see the difference what happened i kept s first percentage last then whatever is started with s came into the picture if i use ends with s nothing came there is no name that ends with s if i keep ends with e this came into the picture okay and whose name starts with s and ends with e in this case i give something like c name whose name starts with s it means s percentage and c name like e it means c name like s percentage means starts with it means ends with so this can be used based on your requirement and if i use not like not like not like s percentage means whose name doesn't starts with s if i keep like it means starts with s if i keep not like it means whose name doesn't start with s see any questions guys no sir no okay next in not in in not in whenever you want to choose your records based on set of possible options based on a list for example now we have customers from different countries there are more than 100 countries we have customers from more than 100 countries i would like to choose the customers of only few specific countries in this case what should i choose i have to prepare a list based on my requirement i need to choose the customer details of the customers those who belongs to 
ఇండియా సింగపూర్ నార్వే సౌత్ ఆఫ్రికా అండ్ అదర్ కంట్రీ ఇన్ దిస్ కేస్ వాట్ హ్యాస్ టు బి డన్ ద కంట్రీ ఆఫ్ ఎవ్రీ కస్టమర్ హ్యాస్ టు బి వ్యాలిడేటెడ్ అగైన్ ఇస్ సెట్ ఆఫ్ ప్రీ డిఫైన్డ్ వాల్యూస్ బికాస్ ఐ హ్యావ్ డిఫైండ్ సంథింగ్ సంథింగ్ ఇస్ ప్రీ డిఫైండ్ హియర్ ఐ వాంట్ టు చూస్ కస్టమర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఓన్లీ దీస్ కంట్రీస్ అండ్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి వైస్ వర్స్ i want to choose the customers of all countries those who does not belongs to this list those who belongs to this list those who doesn't belongs to these countries in this case you can make use of in not in 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 this list extract the details of customer whose country is in this list whose country is not in this list are you to me let's write this select start from customer where country in india and australia comma you can keep list this is your list india comma australia comma singapore comma this is your list in this list now what we are saying here hey select the list of customers those who belongs to india and singapore i wanted to do something for these two countries i need something about the customers of these two countries in this case what we are saying hey select the customer details those who are in this list those who are in these countries now what it will do it will extract the details of all customer whose country in this list in this list here you can keep n number of values see now we got got the list of the customers who belongs to indian singapore if i keep not in i don't the details of indian singapore and other than indian and singapore i want to get the list of all customers who belongs to other countries except indian and singapore it means who are not in this list whose country is not in this list in not in now what happens who is not belongs to indian and singapore will be in the list see except indian and singapore it has extracted the list of all customers who belongs to other countries except these two it has extracted the list of all customers who belongs to other countries except these two any questions guys no sir no okay and apart from this you can use our mathematical operators this is a pretty similar like less than greater than less than or equal to greater than or equal to right not equal to are you to me so you can always make use of these operators like for division you can use slash okay all arithmetic operators are supported here like your c sharp for example if you want to select the list of customers who paid more than thousand dollars or more than two thousand dollars in this case what should i use where amount to paid is greater than 2000 dollars i can make use of mathematic operators relational operators are greater than or equal to who paid 2000 or more than 2000 dollars amount to paid m o u n t i get the list of customers who paid their membership be more than 2000 dollars let's say if i keep less than 2000 i can get the list of all customers who pay less than 2000 dollars okay so this is something about you where any questions guys no sir okay now i want to divide the list into groups 
I want to divide the customers into groups based on their countries. I want to see all Indian customers in one group, Singapore customer in another group, and other country customer in another group. In this case, you have to divide your customers into groups based on a particular column. I want to group the customers based on their country or based on the amount of fee they paid or based on their membership type. So whenever you want to divide your data into groups, you would use a class called group by. Group by. What is the use of group by? When you want to divide your data into groups based on set of columns, then you would use group by and you can also use having. I'll tell you the use of having. Okay. Let's see how to use group by. Select, specify the column names. For example, I want to divide this into groups based on the country. Okay. And within that group, I want to select the maximum membership that we have received. For example, I would, divide, I would like to divide them into groups based on their country. Like all customers of India will go to one group. And within that group, I would like to know what is the maximum membership P paid by that group? Or what is the minimum membership P paid by that group? Okay. So I'd like to know that. I want to see the country name. Select country, comma, maximum of. We have some aggregate functions provided here. As I said, every programming language comes with set of predefined things. Your SQL is also providing a lot of built-in things, a lot of functions, built-in functions, and built-in functionalities, built-in operators. Okay? And when you look into that, SQL is providing some built-in functions. Those are called aggregate functions. Aggregate functions. Like max, min, average, some these are called aggregate functions so whenever you want to perform any aggregations on your data so when you want to calculate something like this the maximum value of that group minimum value of that group sum of values average of those values so you could also write your own programming but you don't need to do that see so your sql is providing some built-in functions you could also take care of these built-in functions you could also make use of these built-in functions to perform respective operations like whenever you need to find a maximum value of that particular group still you can write your own program but not required because we have some built-in function support provided here you can make use of this function if you want to know the minimum value of that particular group you can make use of this you want to calculate the average make use of this if you want to find some of something you can make use of this so I'd like to group my data based on country and within each country, I wanted to know what is the maximum fee paid by that country, that group. Okay. Here I can do maximum of amount paid from customer group by Group by now, I have to divide this into groups based on which column country. You have no column, you can give the alias, so it will take care of finding the maximum membership paid by that group, right? But this your no column name is displayed. So, technically, this is not a particular column, right? This is a kind of calculated column, right? Here, you can give the alias as this column name after calculating the max it should be displayed as maximum amount paid you can give any name what happens now this will be considered as your column as see country maximum amount paid so we divided the entire table into groups based on the country name australia the maximum amount Paid by Australia group is 5,000. India, 800. Singapore, 500. UK, 800. USA, 2,000. So whenever you need to arrange data into groups, whenever you need to divide your data into groups, 
then we require group by class. Any questions, guys? No, oh, sir. Okay. And having, having is always followed by your group by. Having cannot be used alone. And within this, if you want to perform one more conditions, and like whoever is paying more than 500 and more than 800, okay, I'd like to add one more filter. Having, having maximum amount, this max of amount is greater than 800. Are you to me? In this case, what it will do? It will check whether this max amount is greater than 800 or not. So within these groups, if you want to perform one more operation, then you can make use of having class. So this is a use of group by and having. Any questions, guys? No, sir. No. Cool. Okay. So please do practice all these things. Okay. So today you have to create some indexes, cluster and non-cluster indexes on your table. And play okay. with these operators and are like, not like, in, not in. Because when it comes to real-time applications, so in many SQL queries, we'll be playing with these operators. Group by having, okay? Okay, sir. So tomorrow, we'll be discussing other basics, like, you know, how to create a view, stored procedure, function, trigger, and transactions. Okay? Okay, okay sir. All right.